Come on. I want it to be freezing in here. It's 62 degrees in my house right now. Like, I, oh, I like it cold. Why would you do that? You'd like because my- electricity is almost free in Atlanta, apparently. I Look, mm. I, I every every month I get the power bill, and I'm like, what? Can we do like three or four of these at a time or something? Like, like it's so little. It'll be dozens of like dollars. You've gotten like free water. You've Mr. Magooed your way into like free utilities <laughs> in different ways. And in your head, you're like, it's just free. It comes out of the wall. Like, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, your neighbor's like losing hair. Like, oh my God. <laughs> $800. Turn that computer off, Johnny. Turn it. <laughs> Sarah, turn the. Do I hear a microwave ding? I better not hear it. <laughs> Put that water uh, in the sunlight outside. Yeah, Let it get warm. Household now. Yeah, Meanwhile, you're over there, like, like not cold. even using your in-home sauna. It's just on. <laughs> I want to be ready. It's just, it's just red hot rocks. Oh, that's the bathroom where I always leave hot hot water coming out. <laughs> <laughs> just in oh, case. I have to wait. <laughs> uh, you gotta wonder about how Shaq. Well. Shaq's got to be killing it, right? Dude, he, um, he's never seen he's a product those, you won't advocate. He's got for. those general. No, come on. You've heard him talk about the. He 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 only advertises for products that he uses. He says. No, it says the, the, the internet card, true, says that's upwards that's of half a billion, which is pretty card, good. True. Call the general hmm. now. Call the general. <laughs> you know, we, there's a little, I, the only person I trust with my $30 million worth of cars is this little cartoon man who gives <laughs> cut rate insurance to low income people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think it's unhealthy for them. I think you end up with a wet market type scenario. Although, I saw yeah. someone point this out the other day. No one went back and apologized to the wet markets after we found out that it was a fucking lab lab that made the coronavirus. Like Chinese no one back, went back to those poor Chinese wet market salesmen with their like eight levels deep of iguanas and bats and parrots. All yeah. they, they do deserve people. an apology. They do. They do. There was so yeah. much libel and slander. There I was know. so much. I should sue. They were just sitting there like eating the same they've been eating for a millennia. And then yeah. suddenly they're like, hey, you can't eat bat wings anymore. And they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Riri. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> like. They yeah. spoke English. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, like market. yeah. Big shout out to the wet market. <laughs> we love wet market. The, yeah. Do you know that you're about the cave oh, in I was going to say the same cave in Africa is responsible for both Ebola and something called like Marburg virus or something like like, like mm-hmm. two separate human viruses that are a real problem came from the same cave of bats in Africa, and that the cave is still there. We Don't blow like, we haven't st- sealed Team Six in for those bats, dude. Let's Fucking fill that in. That shit up. Fill that yeah. shit in. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, oh what's going God. on in those? Who's living near those caves? What are they? We up need to? to hit that one of those vacuum bombs they were using again yeah. in Afghanistan. Jesus. Yeah, dude. Daisy cutter. Um, Why do we need that? There's, there's a uh, uh, ticks. You, that's true. There's always something, except for ticks. No, oh, yeah, ticks pointless. Oh, 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 oh ticks I'm pointless. sorry, I misunderstood. Uh, they have to be the the worst. Yeah, wasps kind of suck, suck too, as far as I know. Yeah, but some wasps the animals like that eat spiders. Too. They keep spiders in uh, a hornworm, like a lot of things that um, infect fruits and 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 vegetables and gardens and things. Wasps will kill them. Hmm. Interesting. Ticks, well, though. I think ticks, we hate ticks, I think. We can. Ticks are a favorite no food source of chickens, turkeys, and uh, it, it, the message faded. Um, I'm not going to open it up. We were talking about, like, childhood stuff earlier. Did you guys ever have a time, I feel like this happened to everyone at least once, where you were, mm-hmm. like, in a public place as a young child, and you were, like, wandering about, and you, like, grabbed what you thought was your mom's hand in a crowd, and then you, and then it just wasn't. It was just some no. other lady. You never did that. No, I don't. You, hold it, my I think it was. Hands. Yeah, I was a pretty. Hold, I, was, hold, I was a pretty skip while you swing along, holding her hand. Yes. Yeah, I was I a very four year old, and I remember I was at like the science <laughs> hey, center. Philip. I was at the science center, and he I was like, four tail. Kyle, you just gone through puberty. I had just finished puberty. <laughs> my voice was cracking. Yeah, and I was I was walking around the science center. I don't know how I escaped my parents. I guess I escaped my parents a lot. And I like was just holding this woman's hand for like not a brief amount of time. And I like said, mom. And this woman was like, I'm not your mom. <laughs> and I look up and it's 
a black lady I don't know. Not even close. <laughs> not, not, even close. Even, not even close. I, I, well, it was just like a second nature. Like I just was like walking with this, wo- and so like looking back, she was probably like some woman in her like early thirties who was just like this little kid holding my hand for, and yeah. it was maybe the first time in my life that like, like my stomach dropped in fear of like, like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was like like kidnapper, kidnapper. They start beating her to the ground <laughs> because like my my immediate turn thought, loose with that white boy. <laughs> my immediate turn thought wasn't man. like wasn't like oh I've I've lost my mom. Where she must be around here somewhere. Like my thought was like you've been left. You'll never see her again ever. Like, yeah, cause like in, a, in a group that large, it was like, oh my, like I could never find, like maybe 30 seconds later, my mom found me, but stomach dropped. I was like, they've, they've probably already gone home. They probably forgot about me. <laughs> yes, they they probably grabbed a different tailor yeah, and started different. over. My mom's probably somewhere with a little black kid. <laughs> yeah, a little, no little changing places. Yeah, no idea. <laughs> uh, I did that too, Taylor. But it, mine was a little different because I was at the grocery store and I was sitting on this like tile floor. And I don't know how my mom and this woman pulled a switcheroo on me, but suddenly it's not my mom standing next to me. And I, I like threaded my arm between her legs and put my knee on. I'm sorry, my, my head on her knee. Yeah. And uh, I was like, "Hey, mom!" And she's like, "I'm not your mom, sweetie." And I look up, and it wasn't my mom. <laughs> <laughs> then you were like, "All right, well, I'm your problem until we solve. This. <laughs> now we have to solve this together, ma'am." <laughs> because yeah, I wasn't a, a child. I wasn't a touchy feely child. Um, I don't. I, so I definitely. I don't think I ever lost him either. I would wander around when we go to stores. I don't know. I would. I would just go off. I would. Um, I would run around Home Depot hitting that button asking for assistance. <laughs> really? Yeah, that was easy. I, I, really like, <laughs> I, I just um, and I would go to the grocery store. I remember Publix had, and no, I haven't seen this since I was a kid. But they had these coupon machines next yes. to the product. So you'd go to the cereal aisle, and there'd be this little machine attached to the uh, the the shelf, and it would dispense coupons for cereal. You would pull one out, and it would. Mer- stick another one out and you you could like tear it off and so i'd go around just getting them all all over the store like grabbing them um I, Dude, I that's that why i can't believe you mentioned this because that's like a memory i haven't had in <laughs> decades and i remember really feeling like i was helping on the grocery expedition yeah i coupons. like i going up and down every aisle and i'm being like oh uh, you know quaker oats I better get seven of these and like just yep. taking huge amounts of them. I thought, I thought I thought of them as like a kind of currency and it was all you had to do. Looking back, it was just my mom trying to burn some energy of mine. Yeah, go get all the coupons. Yeah, I'd go get the hmm. coupons. I'd go get the uh, the cheese samples. They'd be giving away some cheese cubes in the in the deli. And uh, and if we were in Home Depot, I was hitting all those customer assistance buttons and I would run. I would run as soon as I hit them. And I remember this black lady caught me and she's like, <laughs> and i ran for it I mean, and she kind of because she laughed about it i appreciated that she wasn't mad she, she kind of thought it was knew it was a game too she was down you know she's working at home depot she's probably highest my mom used to like to get me to behave better in the grocery store as a very young kid like the first stop when we went to the grocery store was the deli and fried chicken area and she'd like get me a few chicken wings to eat throughout the trip and so I'd just be like walking alongside her, like eating chicken wings, and that I guess placated me a little bit. Chicken wings. Yeah. You are you are just a little bit of a, like a barbarian child. It <laughs> <sounds like. laughs> I told I've said before this many years ago. On Conan. Show, like, uh, <laughs> I was a leash kid. Uh, oh my god! That, I forgot about that. that yeah. Is yeah. So yes. outrageous. I I closed down a Macy's because I was so good at hiding. I would hear my mom and my grandma. I'd hear my mom being like Taylor, like I could hear the I could hear the warbling of fear in her voice, Taylor. And then I'd hear my grandma like Taylor, Taylor, you around here? We gotta get going. They're closed. And then I'd wait for like like both of them and the assistant, you know, gay guy who worked at Nordstrom or Macy's or whatever to come over there, and they'd come to look at the the circular display of clothes, 
I had my hands on the top and not lift my feet. <laughs> when they peek under there, I lift my what feet. <laughs> so I hit, I hit so much one time that like they had to keep Macy's open longer for me until eventually I came out. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, after that, uh, my mom like put me on a leash briefly and she was she put me on a wrist leash. I escaped that immediately. She was trying to look at clothes in White House Black Market. I was gone. <laughs> I was gone. I was at KB Toys. And then uh, after that, she upgraded to like a full harness one. And like similar to a dog, I realized I couldn't escape that one. And I didn't want to spend time in the leash. And so I stopped running away. That's outrageous. So I, yeah. I don't Why know. I think it's a, it's a normal part of growing up. Every teen, <laughs> every teenager goes through that phase, Kyle. <laughs> I remember. I would. I was probably like three, like oh, like three or four. Very. I young. remember getting in the clothes racks. Like that was fun. You know those mm. circular clothes racks, like hiding in there. Yeah, that was but, fun. It's a good time. But I definitely never hid until people screamed for me and put out a search party or anything like that. Well, it was a difficult situation for me because there did come a time where I realized no one was going to be chill about it when I came out. And so then I was hiding a little harder until where were your, because oh, you, you'd get in trouble when you were found. Yeah. I'm happy to find you. Found. They were. Yeah. Uh, I, I was probably at this point, I was probably like three. And so my oh, younger okay. brother wouldn't have even been like, he probably wasn't even there. And my youngest brother wasn't born yet. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, it wow. was just a, an just, a just having a fun. I was just, just exploring the world. <laughs> learning they call that the scientific method you know, we talked about it briefly but what life kyle's not impressed with everest is there anything that's cool you want to do like big like i i'll never do it but i think sailing across one of the oceans would be pretty dope or around the world like a physical feat well just a, a life experience that you're not complete without hmm. lifelong dream of to, to, to do something to Nothing hat on. nothing nearly as impressive as like sailing across an ocean or climbing a mountain. I guess the only like really intense physical stuff I'd want to do is like stuff I look forward to. Like 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 I would like I have no desire to yeah, just jacking off. Speaking of you were talking about like the neurotic thinking, Caleb, you'd have as a young person, teens. Like I remember being so consumed with fear over like my loved ones dying and going to hell at the age of like six seven eight mm. like all the way up to like 12 that it would like like sleepless nights as like an 11 yeah. year old being like my grandparents are gonna die and there will be no way for me to know if they're burning for all eternity or if they're <laughs> not and i would just walk around day to day and be like taylor did you do your reading homework and i'm like you're gonna die and you're gonna go to hell. Maybe. What, yeah, what if? What if I learning about life? Yeah, I don't want to die and go to hell. Yeah, I hope I make it to heaven. Is there a way to know? Yeah, that that was so so panic inducing for so long. My mom took me to a like a a, a kid therapist when mm -hmm. I was like eleven or twelve for that, and it was so unhelpful because he was like a like even looking back, like it was a Christian therapist, but oh. like frankly. Even like a normal Christian would have been like, you, you just cut it out. Like, stop worrying about like going to hell all the time. Like, that's that's ridiculous. Like, it's what a normal person would do. But I remember specifically sitting in that office and being, he's like, what's what's the issue? My mom's in there too, and I'm like, I just can't, I can't stop obsessing over how everyone is going to die around me and either go to hell and burn for all eternity or not. And there's no way for me to know after they die what's going to happen. He was like looking at his paper. And he's like, hmm, that's a very real fear. <laughs> and I, <laughs> like, that's and why I had, it's important worship it it was stressful that guy stressed me out for like a whole nother year after that the, uh, taking you to me i'd have been like none of this shit's real bro <laughs> but like, they're gonna get eaten by worms and that's the end of their existence <laughs> that wouldn't have helped that wouldn't have i'm been. here to help man. no <laughs> yeah. it's so easy to fix that when you say hey sir what do they tell you about god that he's all good right and he sees everything and he knows everything and let me ask you so is your grandmother a good person yeah. Well, the best. she's got nothing to worry about then, good does she? Because he sees all that. If you think that you see how good she is, just imagine how much he loves her. He see, loves you would have helped a thousand times more than you. Yeah. A so he loves us Christian all. therapist. Not the worm yeah. thing. And then when I was. Uh, no, not the worm thing. He's, not 11, not Woody. he's 11. He's 11. He can't handle the truth yet. <laughs> <laughs> that would be all. Yeah, they, they put me on SSRIs for like 
a six, seven mm. month period. When you were a child? Remember what it was called? Yeah, when I was a kid. I think oh it made God. me into a weirdo. Like, mm. uh, because your that's what did it and you should that's what it is it wasn't me it wasn't intrinsic mm -hmm. and i they put me on it and it was during fifth grade how old are you in fifth grade 11 yeah like around there so like i was on it for like most of that fifth grade school year i have uh, i have no memories i have no distinct memories of fifth grade like that's really, awesome. Kind kindergarten that's through fourth grade sixth grade through 12th grade i can think if i just think for a second like What's a third grade memory? I can like close my eyes, think oh, I can picture what seat I was at, like where my teacher was, like something Damn. that happened with a friend. But fifth grade, it's it's blank. I was it, it was awful. I would love to lose fifth grade. That was the year they bullied me for fixing my hair, walking pigeon toed and blinking too much. Yeah, that was a terrible year. You know what Damn. I do remember from fifth grade? 9-11. <laughs> uh, Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> that was my oh, really put you on SSRIs. Year. Yeah, that was, yeah. was ninth grade for me. It was, uh, it, was a, it was a sad day, though. It was sad a sad day. day. Yeah, really. Everybody was bummed out. We didn't leave school either. We just had to sit through it. I mean, it happened so early in the Midwest that like it was basically an off day, like get to yeah. school 30 minutes of time, you know, 9-11, go home. Well, I think George I Bush first. In. Yeah, George Bush well, came in. We were listening. We were listening to the radio in driver's ed, you know, when it got broadcast, when they, whenever they cut into, you know, the, the seventies music or whatever we were listening to. So, and then we turned the TVs on and watched off like your beard, like the, the chops on the side, everything mm -hmm. you are like Colonel Sanders ready. If you die that white, like if you died, you're, if you just went white and then you've got the Colonel Sanders thing. If I, I saw that. you walk into my, I would, sh I would show some respect. You had the yeah, white I think suit, you should do it for Halloween. A cane? A cane and and give me your old your best old old southern colonel accent. Yeah, you got oh, to wear a boy and a lot. Like leg <laughs> would... leghorn. Yeah, you were, well it'd have to be a little foghorn leghorn ish. I'd have to ease into it before I got in uh, into all of my sharper, racist sharper, theories. Sharper when you do those like uh uh amplifiers. You, you got it. Like yeah, that. well, a little sharper on the I would put hard R's. <laughs> oh, the oh, my well, Colonel always uses a hard R. Yes. Yeah, you, you, but you got to drop the the final R though. Like you know, you got to be like, I'm gonna go down the street, and get me a big old. That's the name of my documentary. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the. Yeah, that's the. If we ever get canceled, that'll be the name of the docu series. The final, the, the final R. <laughs> the final R. <laughs> the hardest R. Supposedly, yeah. Colonel Sanders wore that white suit. He came from the railroad, and somebody told me the story that. <laughs> like he was like like the guy that like shoveled the coal into like from the coal car into the burner of the steam locomotive and he was like really fast at it and he would like his flex was that he could like do it so cleanly with his white suit on that like he wouldn't get dirty and covered in coal that that's where he got his look that carried on into his chicken empire thing well, now, now that, hard is, to believe. that is a, that is a tall tale that's a paul because bunyan level coal story. is dusty as heck I, yeah I so again uh, somebody please correct me on that just somebody tell me that story the other colonel uh, sanders story you're, i know you're, you're right no yeah you're, you're like 99 percent right he um his job was on there but he he, he had he did the the guy who shovels the coal that's the good job Colonel Sanders had to scrape the coal ash from the steam engines which has uh, got to be the, the shit to your job that's good. Yeah. Motivation. That's good backstory. I thought he was always in the. I was room. told a tall tale about Colonel Sanders. I don't. I've never done any research to see if it was real, but it was the <laughs> whole thing about when the, he and his wife no, divorced. No. She kept the original KFC uh, secret recipe and started her own little uh, restaurant there. That's in Kentucky. I've been to it. It's more of a like sit down at a dinner table and they like serve you family style place, mm -hmm. and it is not fast food. It's it's closer to fine dining than fast food. Um, well, I'm but, sure that the the. Okay, there's no way that if it's only eleven herbs and spices that he would forget it. Like, oh, twenty three is Coca Cola, isn't it? No, that's Dr. Is Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Yeah, yeah. Eleven yeah. herbs and spices is is the the KFC way. Yeah. And so I would call somebody. Bunker. Somebody told me their Instagram that they own their corporate 12. Instagram only follows like eleven people named Her Herb or Spice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. They're like years ago, like. Someone posted a screenshot that like the KFC Twitter only followed 11 or 
followed the Spice Girls and like six guys named Herb. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> and, and so that was it. my favorite Colonel Sanders story, old biker buddy of mine is from the same town in Kentucky where Colonel Sanders was from. And this is like years ago, you know, 60s, back in the 60s or something. Anyway, there was this old house in town that for years had been a brothel and supposedly everybody's granddad or whoever, either their first time, like their dad would take them down there to have their first time with a girl or they'd save up their friends with them, whatever. Anyway, Avery. a lot of men of the town all had their first time in this brothel and the building had long since become something else, you know, hair salon, apartments, whatever. And at some point it was going to get torn down. And they were raising money, some kind of historical society to preserve this house. And, you know, several people donated money and that kind of raised some eyebrows and whatnot. And they came up like $50,000 short or some a big amount short. And at the last minute, Colonel Sanders came in and gave them the money to save that house. Presumably that he had also had a special moment in that house back in the day. But, you know, yeah. you know he became a wild card at the end and the KFC Corporation had to cut him loose. He would go. Mm -hmm. He would go into the restaurants, start talking shit about how dirty they were and how bad the chicken tasted. Uh, he said he really gravy tasted. He said their gravy tasted like uh, paste, gl you know, glue. Um, he he'd go into like a random KFC and, ha and lose his shit. <laughs> Can I like you imagine. That. I like that. Like, you know, you need a passionate owner if you're going to maintain high quality chicken. For a little while, KFC had a great ad campaign, and they would have a different colonel every commercial almost. Nor McDonald. Very good, Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Um, oh, John Goodman had a, a there did a parody. Oh, R.I.P. To come. He, he's yeah. he's he's he's, uh, he's kind of shitting on. He's like, church's chicken uh, hates the gays, but not here. The Colonel loves the gays. Hell, I might even be gay. Then, <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just like completely selling out. And then he like look. He like cuts aside to the camera. He's like, well, if I'm being honest, he drops the axe. I don't even give a shit. You're all just money mouths eating. <laughs> And buying, and then it goes <laughs> and goes back to the old timey music in the in the fun in the fun commercial. It's a really good parody. It's one I like that he's a, I like that he's a real guy, like Long John Silver, not a real guy. Captain, no, Captain D, Silver, not a real guy. Uh, Captain Chipotle, Morgan. not a guy. Yeah. It's not a guy at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like <laughs> <laughs> they're all not they're all not guys. Mine's just a little bit less. The Chick Fil A's guy. not real cows. Yeah, remember um, no. Wendy from Wendy's? Wendy was real. Wendy's Wendy real. was yeah. real, but then they but, like they used a hot actress to yeah. play Wendy because I think they did a limited run with the actual Wendy. And yeah. People are like, well, this reminds me I'm eating fast food. Like, you're <laughs> overweight. <laughs> oh, I don't want to eat that. Yeah. Actual Ew. Wendy's. A buddy of mine was from Columbia, South Carolina, where Dave Thomas was from. And let's see, I'm 50, real Wendy's. I don't know, five or 10 years older than I would be because my friend was his age. According to him, you know, growing up in school, everybody around there had these like crazy Wendy stories because she was like, you know, kind of crazy rich girl. She's like that girl would like yeah. get drunk and show up at your house and crash her Corvette into your fountain or something. Like she was this complete party girl kind of train wreck and that people had all these wild Wendy stories about real life Wendy out spending her dad's I believe money that drugs and stuff. You got, but you got that know, square man. burger money burning yep, a hole yeah. in your pocket. You didn't build the franchise, so you don't have the the work ethic to maintain it. You're just partying. Yeah. I, I saw do that. Dave Thomas testify in front of Congress. It was pretty cool. He was talking. I guess he was adopted, and um, he was talking about like you know kids of parents and divorce and whatever. And they asked him huh. like, should kid? <laughs> That's the real Wendy. I asked Zach to pull up. Anyway. He just was like, I don't know what to do about uh, you know kids from separate homes because they're gonna play one dad again against the mom and like work and fire them against each other. And it just seemed like a real moment. I like Dave Thomas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm not, uh, I've never really been a big Wendy's guy. No, no I, just, I just it's fine. I remember when it was Dave Thomas in the commercials and the you know the packaging was all yellow and red and mm. uh, they were just introducing the spicy chicken sandwich and it was it was like these guys are on. Top. You know, yeah. they had the commercial. I think they won the chicken. They had a hockey commercial where the spicy chicken sandwich was like melting the hockey ice down. I think, I think there was some so hot chicken sandwich animated. wars. Everyone thinks Chick fil A won. Everybody's wrong but me. It's winning. Yeah, Chick fil A did win e handily, easily. I covered like, this you know. already. 
No, yeah. no, we'll, we will relitigate this for the next 50, 50, 49 <laughs> minutes if we have to, <laughs> because like it's so crazy that you think Wendy's won that. Even Wendy's doesn't think they won. No, the fact that Chick Fil A couldn't get canceled when with all all that anti gay stuff come out, and it wasn't like they they tweeted something or said something insensitive. They like send money to those countries that make yeah. homosexuality have a, a blessed crime. day, homo. Like yeah, it's, <laughs> they're giving you your bag, <laughs> and gay people were like, "Fuck it, <laughs> have some good ass chicken." Dude, I don't, I, I don't care about bigotry when it comes to food. If there was a place called Stalin's Burritos, and it was the absolute best, and it's like, "Welcome, my friends, to Stalin's Burritos." Uh, you to, to to partake in these burritos, you must uh, give us Soviet salute and deny Holodomor genocide. I'd be like, it never How's happened. That one go? The, I don't actually know. It's not that one. You're Dude, very good like, at what, what if there was? Uh, really... <laughs> what if there was like I don't know? Where you hit your chest? I know yeah. that's you know that's oh, where they pussy the out in the uh, like old shows about Rome. They'll be like. Whew. And I'll be like, that's not where they stopped, and you shouldn't have to stop <laughs> here because they didn't even uh -huh. know about this guy that was coming about. There was thousands yeah. of years. Of but if there was like a, if there was donuts, and they were the best donuts. Donuts. Like it is a good thing I dropped out of art school and pursued my true passion of train scheduling and donuts. Like <laughs> you'd go in and eat it, right? What do you have a sweet tooth? You'd yeah. go to donuts. <sighs> Uh, You're not wrong. Yeah, I, I don't think I would go to Donuts. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. We'll go to Subway on occasion, and he's a that guy was a pedophile. He didn't have anything to do with the the making of the sandwiches or the corporate. He told structure. me about the existence of the sweet onion chicken teriyaki, and that's what kept me going back. I've never had that sandwich. It was the only decent one. It's probably not good anymore. Yeah, I like the Actually, meatball sub. Yeah, I guess it's not that. No, it's it's pretty bad, but it's not. I go into Subway thinking this will be a slightly healthier meal, even though I know the bread is actually not bread because it's yeah, give so me a loaf of bread and uh I actually order the meatball. <laughs> it's like the worst thing on the menu for you. But you know, <laughs> when presented with a meatball sandwich, what are you gonna say? No. Yeah, give me the white double cheese bread and then just <laughs> <laughs> put the lowest quality meat you have <laughs> and <laughs> love it. I went to, I was in the airport in India and the only place to eat was a subway. But, you know, with religious reasons, they don't serve the same meats that we get mm. at this subway here. And, and I'm not lying. This is, and I've eaten some weird stuff. I mean, I've had live silkworm caterpillars and whale mm -hmm. and dog and horses and testicles and all kind of weird shit. That whatever cold cut combo I had was the worst thing I have ever put in my mouth. Like I'm pretty cheap. Like, I mean, to get me to waste food is hard, but like, I really just couldn't finish it. I was like, this is not, it was like, it tasted like petroleum products somehow. Like it was, oh my God, it was awful. Who do you think awful. won the fast food chicken sandwich wars? You know, I mean, I don't know who was fighting at the time, but that one at Popeye's is pretty good. Popeye's? Popeye's, Popeye's was all, all has it going on. It's too much uh, breading on the Popeyes one. I tried it, and it it was like I was getting whole bites of breading before I was even approaching the 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 chicken center of it. Yeah, the the first the first few months they made them extra crispy. They're they dialed it back a little bit, but uh, Popeyes is good. I do like Chick Fil A. I'm gonna have to vote with Taylor on that. Like the Wendy's one is just not there. I rolled through a town one time where a McDonald's was like the only thing to eat in the town. And I rolled through the drive through and I get like what seemed the least offensive thing, which was like a crispy chicken sandwich from McDonald's. And I get my drink and whatever, my fries. Of course, the fries have a half life of like a minute, 15 seconds. So you got to eat the yeah. fries first. I'm like five miles from the place. And, you know, I get into the chicken sandwich and I take a bite and, you know, I kind of think about it for a second. I take another bite and I'm like, I mean, it didn't taste bad, but I was like, what is this reminiscent of? And I was like, it was so bland and waxy. I was thinking, like, if Yankee Candle made a chicken scented candle, and then you ate the candle, that's what this tastes like. Like it was just like chicken scented something on the bun, but it was not chicken. It was uh, that's the kind of candle that Kyle would like with his terrible candle taste. I can, <laughs> oh, I can oh, say yeah. it. Now, he's he's not here. Gone. Yeah. yeah, don't tell him. Make it back. I looked into buying franchises at one point. And I was curious about it. Uh, a Wendy's, you can own a Wendy's. They're about $2 million. Oh, and wow. 
Uh, yeah, the franchises are more expensive than you might guess. But a Wendy's about two billion dollars to get going. A Chick Fil A is like three hundred grand. But the difference is, you can't own a Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A owns all those Chick Fil A's. What you what you're doing for that three hundred grand is you're buying a job, a pretty good job. You can only own one Chick Fil A. You can own as many Wendy's or McDonald's, whatever as you want. But you can only own one Chick Fil A. That's your job, and you work there. And I said own. I shouldn't have phrased it like that. You're buying a job. You work for this place, but you get the profits from it. And when it's time to sell it, you don't own it. You just leave that job. So yeah. it's a different mark. It's a different way of doing it. But Chick Fil A franchises. I guess they're nice if you're not rich already because you can get it like 300 grand is a lot, but it's an amount that a per, people can get to, right? You're a lot of homes yeah. are that much. Like you can get there, but, uh, um, 2 million. And you would think a bank would be likely to, to sign on that one. It's, you know what I mean? Oh. Like, yeah, I didn't look at it through that lens, but it they can sense. get their money back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, exactly. Uh, yeah, you... But what sticks yeah. is when you're not building your own business, like if I you want buy... in and out. I'm not, you know, um, takeout, you know, that place that I always talk oh, about. There's when, when they cook out. Thank you. You know, yeah, okay. When a cookout comes into a new market, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a lockdown situation. They need police officers there to handle the traffic. They do double, triple, quadruple lines at the beginning, like a theme park. And then they slowly break down to smaller lines. They're taking your order out in the parking lot. It's, it's like the, the circus came to town. It's wild. And it's, yeah. look, it's not the best food I've ever had. But it's a cool experience. They got like 30 something milkshakes, for example. They have one menu for milkshakes. And it's like, this is our milkshake menu. It's like, holy shit, I've never seen that before. And instead of just fries being sort of the default, and Burger King and McDonald's try to act like they got eight different sides, but you know what they got. They got fries and onion rings, maybe. But they, they'll be like, yeah, you want a chicken quesadilla instead? Yeah. I do want a chicken quesadilla instead. Give me that instead of fries. They, they do ridiculous combos. It'll be like barbecue pork, a corn dog, and a quesadilla will be one of their combos. So those places are super nice. super cheap. Yeah, it's cheap as hell, and they're there at like 2 in the morning. Everybody else has been closed for three That's hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've stopped there on road trips uh, before and been like, it's the only place open in, in some sleepy little town in the Carolinas. The other thing I looked into buying uh, – and it was actually my leading candidate because it's the job I think I'd enjoy the most. I was like, I should own a movie theater. This is pre-COVID. Mm. That would have been the biggest financial mistake of my life. Dude, <laughs> that would have been so bad. Oh, You'd have been like Randy Marsh. I don't know if you've seen this episode, but there's an episode where Randy decides to invest in Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's got all the speaking points down that he clearly got from the blockbuster salesman maybe he's like studies have shown that in, in remote rural areas bandwidth is not yet uh, significant enough to provide dvd playback for customers and therefore rental rental spots are still the most the the, the best the best bang for the buck to get your video watching done it just is it just is he's like right randy right. and they're all sitting going insane in his blockbuster there's a ghost there it's so old it's haunted <laughs> <laughs> and he's like it's not that old <laughs> i i read that i think paramount or sony no sony sony just bought all the uh the draft house um Alamo Draft House, right? Alamo Draft House uh, Corp, like like all those really nice uh, theaters. I just don't go anymore. You know, I, I used to go all the time. Often when we're talking about movies, I'd be like, yep, saw that one in theaters. Yep, saw that one in theaters. Because I used to go every weekend, and sometimes I would stay there all day. I'd watch two or three in a row. You know, like you don't have to pay for those other tickets once you're back behind the ticket counter. <laughs> That's how it works, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it really I like is. mowing. You guys like mowing? I just got a new mower. Not really. Kind of cool. What'd you, know, you get? I, I got a little electric mower for inside my pool fence. So I have a big yard. And uh, so I mow it mostly with like commercial level zero turns and a tractor with a bat wing. But inside the pool, I had nothing and it got kind of out of control. So I bought a little electric one thinking it'd be easy and it maybe worked, did the job. I use a scythe. It's cool. Fuck scythe. yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Eastern yeah. European style. Yeah. <laughs> Break out <laughs> the old Ukrainian accent. surf. That's the person pocket. <laughs> And it's yep. and it's off time. You, so my mowing is part of your relaxation, uh, I guess. Behaviors, Caleb. You really like it? Yes, I uh, grew up as a farmer boy, and I just Ooh. bought a hundred and four acres, and I have a fifteen I foot. Back, I don't have a big yard. Fifteen. <laughs> it's way too big. I'm tired of it already. I have a <laughs> I bought a tractor and a commercial lawnmower, and I'm like, this is really fun. And Please then the lawn starts to get. Well, which which one? With, with the, oh, the lawnmower? Right, or how many horsepower is your tractor? 75. 
Nice. 45 over yeah. here. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty Yeah. My dad basically forced me to get a really nice tractor. <laughs> Do you have a cab? Uh, and, Is it air conditioned and everything? Yeah, it's a cab. It's a cab. Uh, it's a fifty seventy five E John Deere, and the it's a fifteen foot rotary bat wing John Deere, and then the uh, it's like the base level um, sixty inch uh, commercial John Deere uh, fucking yeah. lawnmower. Yeah, so we have turn. a seventy two inch John Deere commercial That's uh, cool. zero turn and a twelve foot bat wing, but on a forty five horsepower mower, sometimes you're moving slow with that twelve foot. Oh bat yeah. Wing. Yep, yeah. like five miles an hour, four, three, three and a half. Uh, uh, like where the we have a, a septic system where the grass is like wildly thick. I'll stop talking about yards soon, everybody. And uh, <laughs> and I'm literally going like one mile an hour with the bat because <laughs> the grass like, over uh, the uh, yeah, uh, it it doesn't like it. How did you realize your passion for mowing, or, or is it a passion for mowing, or is it a passion for tractors? Because I see the tractor aspect. It's it's a passion for just not having to listen to. Women yap really is what it is. I've got to say that's so pretty true. much what it is. Men, yeah. men, men. <laughs> yeah. men. Do you need no, hearing uh, protection in a cab tractor? Uh, you, I wear headphones regardless, but um, it's it's. I feel like it's probably just on the cusp of being damaging for your ears. I'd say. Okay. But yeah, yeah. I've been. We used to. I used to mow hay with my dad and like bale hay and stuff. So it's just been something I've always done. What kind of farm was it? Like a cattle farm or livestock? Uh, Crops. Like a pretend farm, kind of. Okay. Uh, my grandparents have 150 acres in Virginia and like in, on the West Virginia border. And they uh, had like some cattle, some just a bunch of random stuff. No, it wasn't like profit driven or anything like that. But my dad's a team roper. So we would uh, like have cattle for that uh, and bale hay for horses, mainly a horse farm, I would say, I guess. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Horses. So did you How much ride of it horses do you mow? Wait, 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 what was it? I, I said, how much of it do you mow? Like, you probably don't keep all 104 acres, like, a yard. No, uh, I have, a, I have, like, two acres, basically, that's a yard, that's, like, irrigated, and then the rest is just bat wing uh, that I mow, like, once a, every month, basically. Wait, so the other 102 acres, you mow, like, a... Probably, uh, probably, probably 60% of it is, like, coastal fields, so, yeah, it gets mowed. Good. Wow, that is a big job. Yeah. A lot of work. My dad does a lot of it. To be fair, he does the mm -hmm. the the road because I get I've I'm I'm a danger to myself. If you've ever <laughs> we'll set up like like if you're if you're mowing hay, you know you you cut giant fields. You know it. Oh yeah, crazy. Uh, to, my dad used to do that, and I would I would help some. I I did mm -hmm. not enjoy that job. That just endlessly riding a tractor all yeah. day. Yeah, you'd be <laughs> mowing forty. You'd be like for, a forty acre big square field. You're just making yeah. circles. Oh, oh, nowadays, I think there's GPS that help the tractors, but it's not yeah. me. I just, yeah, I'm there trying to, I try to maximize it. Right? I have 12 foot. I try not to have more than like six or 12 inches of overlap between the other one. So you're really paying attention the whole darn time, making yes. sure you're not leaving stripes. And, and you're just looking behind you and it hurts your neck. Eventually it just gets, it, it's really nice for like the first 30 to 45 minutes. And then it's just like, all right. <laughs> yeah i'm ready to not do this anymore are you gonna uh, land over an animal with your mower last oh, yeah. weekend what'd you mow a rabbit yeah oh, well, much left a lot of, there yeah, was rabbits. a dead rabbit in front of the guest house and uh um I, don't, I, I was told about it and i'm like i got a good guess on how this happened and then when i saw the body i was like was all but confirmed i mean it, yeah they yeah. freeze they, they freeze up and uh, baby rabbits you just run right over them and chop them up. Mm -hmm. We would we would see stuff all the time, like especially the babies, because the more would pass over them, kind of set them to the side, and like maybe maybe your mom will come back, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But the, but rats would run out too, so you kind of you keep a gun with you on the tractor, so you could shoot the rats as they ran. Rat around. shot, yeah, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> that's a pretty tough shot. Pistol, yeah, rat like, shot, little 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 pellets. Three fifty seven, oh, just. Oh, it's yeah. like a I feel like I would t I would kill one rat per six shots fired, maybe. <laughs> probably and there'd be an escape rate too <laughs> <laughs> high escape rate of uh, a rat if you add cattle in you won't have to mow as much and that could be a kind of fun thing yeah goats, goats are you are gonna good. are you yeah, gonna yeah. add animals we i have three cattle yeah right now hell yeah mule. Mule. you want a cows. mule because the mule the, the mule will defend everything against any predators mm -hmm. and uh and and they do all that stuff too apparently mules are just better than horses and donkeys yeah. or whatever uh, they're just like superior third-party animal 
Um, Which especially as a pack in? animal. Texas. Okay. Oh, no, there's camel, no alpaca. <laughs> yeah, any African game. Uh, Gimsbach, <laughs> Neil guy. I mean, <laughs> any type of fucking crazy giant shit. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to figure out what we want to put on it. It's like we've started with a. We have this little stupid cow that my mom got for me. It's it was like beaten to shit, literally like a punching bag while it was a. Aww. Uh, baby it was being birthed and its mom was just like running around smacking it against trees and shit it took a couple weeks wow. for it to learn how to stand up but now he's doing all right and his name's ace and he's probably 40 percent of how big he should be uh and he is very ornery he's really he's a huge asshole but he's cool i like him and then we have two uh little hairy highland cows do you have to oh. do you have to bottle feed that guy uh he's he's grown out of that at this point um, but he was to. bottle fed. He was yeah. bottle fed for a long time. Yeah, that's for a Highland cow. Four months. It is the little hairy ones. The, the long hair ones. Right? Yeah. You should get yeah. one of those oh, Belgian those blues. Those are amazing. Oh yeah, dude. I, I, hold on, I can't get past the cow thing. Uh, <laughs> is this like an investment? Are you raising them? Are they? I, sometimes I've heard them called yard ornaments. You know, like cows. Yes, they're useless. They are. Uh, they are. I did. Uh, we will use them allegedly, but that's just for. Sales tax for uh, for ag <laughs> for ag exemption, uh, but uh, they're they're just cool. I bought them. My my uh, my girlfriend really loves them, so I just got them for her. And I was like, this is a cool first start, you know. One hundred and four acres is neat. Like that could yeah, be the start awesome. of generational wealth. I know not all Texas yeah, land is super expensive, but it sounded like you got water, you know, coastal something. Yeah, there's a there's a pond. We're actually six minutes from town, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it's really it's beautiful. I'm incredibly grateful. It's it's very 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 cool. It's very cool. Yeah. Well, I I predict and hope that it turns into an amazing investment for you. That, that, I hope so. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I certainly hope so. Do you hunt at all? Oh yeah, man. That, when you said mules, I I've uh, purposefully set up. My mom tries to get my girlfriend to get mules and all sorts of shit that makes a bunch of fucking noise. But I'm like, don't do that because <laughs> I want other animals. Shut up, idiot. I have uh, hogs, uh, a lot of hogs, huge hog problem, and it's just we it's just like a continuous weekly sort of thing we partake yeah. in. Not a lot, yeah. yeah. Grow up hunting as well. What do you do with the yeah. bodies? The hog uh, bodies. We we will knock the loins out and cook the loins, uh, and then just use it as bait, grind them, grind up pieces, and just have fun with it. Basically, do you, so you put them in like grinder. A, yeah, like <laughs> a front end loader on the tractor that you just carry the log and you. Loins? Does that mean like back? The uh, tenderloin. Yeah, the back straps. I'm, I'm from the from the city. I, the, yeah, just like the big muscles on it, like the the deadlift muscles. Yeah, just like the whole oh. back of the animal. Basically, you just cut into it, peel the skin back, and then just kind of lightly trim it out. And they also have an inside. Let's call it an inside loin, but it's like a, it's pretty good actually. Um, okay. It tastes solid. You don't need to like br uh, brine it or anything like that. Mm. Oh. Man, but, you you set up a fun life. That's awesome, dude. You know, I'm I'm known as like the cult guy on YouTube. People always think I'm like the cult guy because I have all these people. I've got like 50 employees and shit, and like I try to get my friends to move here a lot because mm -hmm. uh, it's like a really small town that I'm in, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the town kind of likes me and shit. So we might there might be some kind of conflict eventually with the federal government. I haven't decided yet, but uh, we're just I'm joking. It's like a, I'm just making a cult <laughs> reference. <laughs> that will oh, never okay. Happen. I was very yeah. I was buying it hook, line, and sinker. I'm like, okay, no, no, good luck uh, with that. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's uh, it, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's cool though. I I really it's beautiful. I, I love it. I want to keep doing more. It's fun. Yeah, those wild pigs aren't going anywhere either. Like like uh -uh. they're such a they reproduce and they're so so quickly and they're so hardy that mm -hmm. they're not going anywhere. They're you so good need, at surviving. They're great. Yeah, they would. They don't have any predators, really. You know, they would need yep. to do. Um, I don't know. There's some program where they drop all of these um, hookworms or something, boar beetles that are uh, that can't reproduce. They're they're sterile to keep the boar beetles from moving north north into the U.S. and ruining our trees. I guess you would need to do something like that to the pigs. You need to like ruin mm -hmm. their breeding cycles somehow. What could we put in in there that feasts on pigs, bears? Maybe maybe some uh, maybe some sort of pig herpes. That makes uh, yeah. that makes their dicks hurt real no, bad, that's and they like can't fuck. Twenty eight days later, begin. Skinwalker. <laughs> like new Doc, design. I got pig herpes. I promise, it's not what you think. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked a <the> pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it is what you think. <laughs> yeah, no bears that's would funny. eat them. Tigers, 
I know there's tigers in uh, Texas. Not a lions and tigers. Yeah, lions. I don't yeah. think there's anything. Fence, though. I don't have a high fence, so I can't uh, I can't put any any exotic game legally yet. I mean, down the road yeah. though. Yeah, yeah build a. Expensive. Oh my god! Yeah, it's like a hundred grand to to do it. It's crazy how expensive it is. Yeah, it's wild. Like, like per foot, it's it's probably some, mm -hmm. some silly number. You start. Like, yeah, because yep. because they're really really high. I don't know. Are they ten or twelve feet or something? The ones I've seen, it's like ah yep. yeah, that keeps steering. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, a lot of those tall, people have that, foot. like you mentioned, that African game and stuff that can really fucking jump and bound and clamber. Yep. And you got to keep that stuff in. Not only because your neighbor probably doesn't want a African buffalo in his yard, but also because you don't you don't want to lose your African buffalo. Yeah, they're they're, they're valuable. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, um, it's cool though. I really want to. Um, eventually, I think it would be cool to have some kind of high fence with like Axis and Neil Guy and stuff like that. But Neil Guy are awesome because they're large, they're hardy, it, they thrive in the in the Texas uh, climate. Um, they're delicious they're very 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 good um and they look fucking cool i i'm looking at them on you on uh, google right now i've never heard of a neil guy until just now neil guy yeah they're very they're cool they're um there's a lot of them south uh, near austin outside of san antonio and san angelo and like all those kind of areas in the a little bit west there's a bunch of neil guy farms yeah i'll take some of my head woody just thought it it's literally means blue cow and it's the largest antelope in asia ubiquitous <laughs> across the northern india subcontinent but i wish that was on its back well, red as you that's all i know <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's one <laughs> why does it look so awkward you know what it I does? Because it, its head is so snobby. little, it looks <clears throat> jacked. It's holding it, his yeah. head back like he smelled something. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's an odd they look funny. animal. It looks like Very they didn't good. finish. It, it was like, it was so like they delicious. ran out of time at the end, and they, they just quickly <laughs> did the front part. They just yeah. Yeah, they're so fucking it. delicious. All the good. It's crazy. What, what do they taste different from normal beef? Um, well, I th I th it's hard to even compare beef. Have you guys had elk? Yeah. yeah. It's elky. It's elky. Very elky. But still, okay. it's hard to like. It's just so good. I love it. I think it's probably my favorite meat. If I had to choose one. Then you need to buy at least like four. Get some breeding pairs. That'd be fun. Like Rim World. Yeah. <laughs> Couple awesome. of fucking Texas meal guy breeding really, pairs. Texas must have really loose laws for owning various wild game and exotic animals, huh? What laws? Yeah, because <laughs> there are really now and then. That many. A, a while back, I was like, man, I kind of want a capybara. Like how much mm -hmm. are they? They're cheap. They're like like a dog, the same cost as a dog. And uh, I keep reading about how cool they are and how like they're just friendly with every other animal. There's that famous picture on on Reddit of one with like hanging out with a caiman, one hanging out mm -hmm. with like like all of the wildlife in the area. The capybara is not just chill with it, but seemingly friendly with. They're like sidled up and snuggling with with crocodiles and yeah. shit. Yeah, I've seen and the I pictures of them like chilling in hot springs. Yeah, Very yeah, they love they're like birds perched on their cute little heads. And they had the the sort of the, I don't know the mentality, not the mentality. The the they seem like dogs. Like you can like, scratch them on the head, and they like enjoy that, and they want to hang out with you. Who are we but you can't about? have them in Georgia. A capybara. capybara. They're, They're the, the largest, largest oh. rodents. The largest rodents rat. in the world, I believe. I'm with you, except. I didn't hear Big the rat. animal at the beginning, and you're like, oh, they're really adorable. They like swamps. They have little birds. I thought we were talking about a hippo this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of oh. like, they're adorable. They're cra They're like dogs, really. Like, no, they're vicious. Nah, hip hippos are awful. I read that article the other day, and it's like, Thomas James raised the hippo from birth for six years, every day, spending time with it. And then one day, it drugged Tom into the water and ate him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I, I don't feel bad for that guy at all. Like oh, I mean, he he fucked with the hippo, like he he went to Africa, got a hippo, cared for it for like. Do you know how many people were warning him? And they're like, you know, you yeah. should not be doing this. It is but, going to fuck you up. Because I feel the same. But do you feel bad for Steve Irwin? Yeah, yeah, I loved yeah, him. Because he's doing his job, you know. I do yeah. feel bad. Yeah, well, I, there's like I I, I choose my battle. Hundred percent. I feel bad for all of them. I, like, no, not the hippo guy. Like everybody knows, hippos are the most dangerous thing ever. And this yeah. guy was almost a PR person for hippos, where he's like, "Look, it's it's a gentle, kind, sold animal, and it's it's how it's." He's making like a pit bull argument, like it's how it's raised, I, and it's like, no, I, it's a fiercely territorial animal. You did, but 
I really view this guy as a fellow bad decision maker, and I have some empathy for his standpoint. <laughs> I've broken every arm and leg. Everyone knows I routinely do dumb shit, right? But that's how life is lived. This guy was doing the he, he beats the perhaps of his own beats marches to the beat of his own drummer. You but you're doing dumb shit where you're still in control. Like you're in the air flying and you're you're deciding how you fly. Like when you take a hippo, a full grown hippo into your care like what happens every day is whatever that hippo decides happens the universe so and i wrestle for control of how my shit goes <laughs> that's what they should have asked women instead would you rather run into a hippo or a man mm. in the woods because bears might run away or bears might just be so full from fish or a kill that mm -hmm. they're just like have a stomach ache and they couldn't bear to eat you <laughs> i saw a picture but, of a um, bear hugging a man because it had just spent the last week with women. <laughs> no <don't know> more. <laughs> yeah. Like, like if he's spending all day eating the honey and he sees you, he's just like, oh, I couldn't bear it. I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't. Not another, not another drop mm -hmm. of human. But mm -hmm. like a hippo, I feel like every time I see a video of people interacting with a hippo, it's aggressively trying to murder them, and it can. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're just fucking scary looking. Their heads are like these giant things they're just they're they're actually, mind boggling yeah they got actually you've seen the, the ladies at the zoo feeding them melons now those seem like oh dude hippos. yeah they seem nice that's you true stick your, stick your head uh, in the game the game the hungry they hippo open game. their mouth to get their teeth brushed and shit but that's and, and, what the guy thought who had a hippo pet that's what he well too. you know what hungry, maybe, hungry he was fucking it. maybe he was fucking that hippo and nobody knew and the hippo just had that's true enough. hey question question manatees where are you guys at on manatees i'm pro Oh, big time pro manatee. I think those boats should there's I think they should have more and more regions in Florida where the boats can't go, or they should design a new propeller that has a housing or something. So they agree chopping those poor manatees up. Yeah, I like you know, you know what do you think about uh propagating manatees, spreading them out, get, get uh, them to expand. More the I'm, better. Yeah, I like them. They're called they're called the ribeye of the sea. Did you know that? They're, uh, they're not called that. Pe and people are called long, long pig in Papua New Guinea. But, Kyle, but you're wrong. I've heard this so many times. They're called the ribeye of the sea. Yeah. And they uh, make excellent lovers as well. Okay. okay. Yes. Well, that's why I was pro-manatee. That's why Woody's <laughs> <laughs> Normally, I'm not into pet chicks, but for manatees, I'll make an exception. <laughs> I think there's a market for some kind of business for manatees. Just I, put it out there. Where it, Could it be like choosing Pleasure your manatees. own lobster? Something. Oh. Something. Something like that. I think they're delicious. I mean, I think I've heard that they're delicious. I don't, I've never had one. I think they are actually called, are they rich? They're like sea cows, right? Yeah. Sea cows. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine you go out there and like... throw like a head of lettuce in the water and choose your own manatee? Oh! <laughs> uh, we're, we're taking a bath on this manatee project. <laughs> a steak's only 16 ounces and <laughs> these things weigh 3,000 pounds. I just feel like they would be so delicious. And that's like the 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 myth of uh, mermaids is that they're just yeah. manatees because they got them like yeah. woman pussies. Oh, yeah. do they? Oh, we allegedly. Didn't we didn't know this aspect of it. We thought it was like, like manatee, manatee pussy. Yeah, that's I don't a do thing that. I'll need to bing. <laughs> don't do that. That's it. Go to bing. Make sure you bing it. Zach, go ahead and pull up manatee clam. Pull up manatee <laughs> pussy. Bing manatee pussy. Bing. Turn off yeah. blur. No, I, I guess I would be a hypocrite if I would say I wouldn't eat any animal other than dog. Dogs are our friends. Can't eat dog. Korea's got to get their shit together on that. I've been to none of these are manatee. These are all humans. I'd recognize it anywhere. Well, if it comes down to a person or a dog, I would have to eat what person, actually? Uh, it's a random person that's also in the What if it's like us. a well-marbled Dan Schneider? We go down oh. in the Andes. <laughs> Here, here's, all right, here's the scenario. We go. Our, our plane goes down in the Andes. We're not going to get rescued for weeks at least. And holy shit, one of them soccer players is dead there, out there in the snow. We didn't know him, but man, is he fit. Those guys can run, okay? His back strap, can you imagine? But there's also a Labrador who's still alive. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, well then, hey, we, yeah, we are going to prioritize the dead guy because the lab hey, like. will be fresher later. And actually, the worst kind of human to eat would be like an endurance runner or a soccer player because you, you know how you can get right. like rabbit starvation? Like you'd get that because the fat them. they're because yeah. they're so lean they don't have any fat content yeah. on them. We, you would want to crack his bones open, get his marrow. You'd honestly True. want someone who looks probably more <laughs> like me to eat. Toby would eat his nuts. 
<laughs> Taylor would get so good at cracking the human bones open, like 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 crab legs, and get, <laughs> get that oh, marrow out. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, Wait, how are you gaining guys? weight? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are brains. so old. the marrow our brains is so good. does look a our lot brains like made of fat. Human, yeah, Not but I think if you eat human brains, you get calorie. uh prion disease, right? Yeah, you can't eat the brain. well if they had a prion. If, yeah, you yeah. don't want to take the risk, though. I don't right? know. The internet's made me believe those are like. Dude, I'd risk it. Like, pretty common, but I know they're not. Prions, yeah. Well, they're just a. Pro it's just a simple protein. That's why they're scary, and they can just kind of like they just like they came into existence. It's kind of weird. They're they're very mysterious. Prions are very mysterious. Interesting. I saw I didn't know it was there's a, a cow in Scotland that recently tested positive for mad cow, and there's a man in Michigan that tested positive for that new bird flu or whatever. Mm. So. Dude, it's bird flu is so like... much less scary than mad cow. Really? Is yeah, it... mad cow's the one that like eats your brain up, right? I well, have a dumb question. Does bird it flu, people? a little fucking uh, orange juice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have to swallow mad the cow. cows. Yeah, mad cow's also, I believe, a prion. I think. I think it is. So it's chronic it's, wasting disease. It's one of the, and it's caused by the shitty way agriculture is done. Like, like they feed cows ground up cows, and they feed cows mm -hmm. chicken shit. They, they like you know a, weird they will feed cows chicken shit mixed in with feed it's regularly done I, i've this done dumb it. question kyle <laughs> well, this is, <laughs> is it done on purpose like yeah. they literally are like oh chicken poop is free yeah, food. It, it you know because it's expensive to feed cows through the winter uh, sure it, you know and if as you if you mix in a big bucket of chicken shit in with a whole bunch of hay they don't seem to mind but yep. there's calories it's more, is useful or food, food. Well, they get they eat grass normally, so chicken shit can't be that much less caloric than grass, you know. My grandpa was and, not uh, feeding his cows chicken shit; he was giving them sweet feed. Sweet All feed, year, motherfucker. Uh, through the hay, he just had he just through the winter he just had pot, sweet feed. Well, a ton of sweet feed. Hay. Well, hay a ton of the time too. No, they only get sweet feed when it's time to steal their babies. Because I, I, uh, <laughs> I think um the. Uh, Chickens probably the way that their their bodies and brains work, and because they have like a really, they're birds, they have really probably, uh, I assume, bizarre digest, uh, digestive systems. So their shit mm. probably has some of the nutrients that cows need because they're ruminants. I would assume some genius figured out that you can safely feed cattle shit uh, yeah. for a period of time, obviously. And then there's, safely. you know, yeah. Yeah, you, get, you get some it, derivations. Yeah, I, I don't think it's unhealthy for them. I think you end up with a wet market type scenario. Thank you.